Hello everybody, my name is Miss MDT. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the B Society. I am so glad that you're here today and I really hope that I find you all well. So I'm super excited for filming this video after disappearing for a few weeks, guys, just because I had a couple of assignments to hand in. Oh yes, guys, it's becoming really serious. But that's a topic for another day. So in today's video, I've decided to be answering some of the questions that I've been getting from some of you guys. Before I start, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. And it's always such a great pleasure to have you here. So if you're new, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and also press that bell icon so that next time when we post a video, you'll be notified. Also follow me on Instagram, which is right here and if you do follow me don't be shy to message me guys your comments your questions or what you think about this video with that being said I'm gonna dive right into today's video so like I said I'm gonna be answering some of the questions that I've been getting from some of you guys so I've got my notebook I'm gonna be reading the questions and I'm gonna be answering them the best I can. So the first question I'm gonna be talking about is, what training and qualification do physician associate have? So physician associate already have a degree in either healthcare sciences or life sciences. So this could be biomedical sciences, pharmacology, nursing, radiography, or something along those lines. And then they do go on to study a two year postgraduate qualification. So this could be a postgraduate diploma or a master's degree. It's full time, it's very intense, and it's trained to a medical model. It's 50% theory and 50% practice. So this means that you're gonna spend 50% of your time in university learning the theory side of things and 50% of your time in placements. So this could be primary or secondary care in a variety of healthcare settings. So this could be in a surgical ward, medical ward, in a GP, or even doing community visits. So I hope I've answered this question guys. I'm gonna move on to my next question. Are PAs registered? At present, physician associate can register voluntary with the faculty of physician associate. Although it's up to them whether to register or not, physician associates are strongly recommended to register. This is good for the employer, for the public, and for you as a physician associate. However, the General Medical Council is going to be registering physician associate. It has been agreed and it can take up to 18 to 24 months from the date that it has been agreed for everything to be set up. Once the GMC sets everything up, it's going to be compulsory. So it's not going to be a choice anymore. If you want to practice as a physician associate, you're going to be required to register with the General Medical Council. So I hope I'm making sense here, guys. I'm going to move on to my next question. So the next question is, what are your thoughts of physician associates being regulated by the GMC? And is this the outcome you would have wished for? So as for me guys, yes, it is the outcome that I would have wished for. I personally, I think the General Medical Council is gonna be the best regulatory body for the physician associate. This is simply because physician associates are trained to a medical model. They're going to be working with the medical model. So because of that, I genuinely think the GMC is better than the Healthcare Professional Council, the HCPC. Because physician associates are medical practitioners, I think the General Medical Council is great because they've been doing it anyway. They've been dealing with medical practitioners for years. So they're going to be the best regulatory body to be setting out the PA standards. So my next question, do physician associates specialize? Physician associates are generalists. However, they can choose to work in a more specialized area. So this could be gynecology or something like that. And they are allowed to stay there for as long as they like once they qualify. But they do need to keep up to date with their generalist knowledge because they're going to need it when they revalidate. I know some people call it recertification. So this happens after every six years. 
at present they will need to reset a national exam which is why they need to keep up to date with their generalist knowledge so the answer is physician associates are generalist but they can choose to work in a specialized area however they do need to keep up to date with their generalist knowledge for their revalidation or recertification if you want to call it i hope that answers your question guys but if you do need any more information like i always say don't be shy to message me on instagram which is right here or you can put a comment down below so i'm gonna move on to my next question Question number five, how much do physician associate earn? Yes, that's a very good question. Although we can go on and study physician associate because we genuinely have an interest, I think it's really important to look into the salary because we're gonna be earning from there and we're gonna be making a living from there. So it's a very good question. Whoever asked me this question, well done. So guys, Physician associate usually start a band seven agenda for change pay ban. However, if you do choose to do a um, one year preceptorship, that's gonna be paid a band six. I know a lot of trust they do pay band six salary for the preceptorship year. And as well, guys, with experience and as you go on to take leadership roles, it can go up to band eight or band nine salary. So, guys, since I say the preceptorship here is band six salary, I think it might as well be worth mentioning that a lot of physician associates that have qualified and go on to take up band seven post have actually agreed that they prefer they would have taken the preceptorship year because what the preceptorship year does it helps you transition from being a student physician associate to being an autonomous physician associate practitioner so they did agree that they felt like they threw themselves in the deep end they would have rather taken that preceptorship here so yes it is strongly recommended that once you qualify you take that preceptorship here but if you're confident and you know exactly what you're doing do go ahead and put yourself into the deep end you might not need the preceptorship here if you're not familiar with the agenda for change pay bands guys do message me I'm happy to explain or you can even look it up just type in agenda for change pay bans it explains everything about the band 6 band 7 that I'm talking about the next question is what is a PA that's a very good question what is a physician associate this might sound a little bit silly but if you're new and you're still trying to find out what physician associate is and you're thinking of applying this is a very brilliant question i'm gonna try and answer it the best i can guys physician associates are collaborative professionals they work within the multidisciplinary team they do work under the supervision of a doctor although they work under the supervision of a doctor physician associates are not doctor's assistants they do work autonomously although I do think that having a supervisor is a great idea it's nice to have somebody who you know they can support you especially when you're newly qualified you do need that support like i said you're not gonna learn everything in two years if you meet something that you don't know or you're stuck with something there's always somebody there to give you support so in short this is what a physician associate is like i say guys if you do need more information don't be shy to message me so i'm gonna go on to my next pay question what do pas do so physician associates, they do carry out a number of tasks as long as they stay within their area of competency. So they can uh, take medical history, examine patients, um, see patients that have long-term conditions such as asthma. They can offer health promotion and disease prevention advice things like that they can also carry out some clinical procedures such as annulation vena pancha urinalysis and catheterization they also certain procedures that they can carry out although they will need to go for extra training for that things like lumbar pancha and drain incision physician associate are allowed to do these things but they do need to take extra training before they can actually do it themselves and there are other duties that physician associates are also involved in, although they don't have like a direct 
um, contact with patients but they are just as equally as important so these roles are things such as quality improvement because of course we want to make sure that we're giving patients the best quality care so the only way to do that is to participate in quality improvement activities such as taking audits and things like that I'm just gonna go straight to my last but not least question what are current limitations of the role so at present physician associates are not allowed to prescribe or order ionized radiation and this is because physician associates are not registered at the minute once physician associates are registered i think they're going to be allowed to prescribe or order ionized radiation although they might need to take extra training for them to be able to do that it will come i do know that there are a few questions that i didn't get to answer the question about funding and how i'm funding my course this question is popping up a number of times but I am getting to you guys I'm planning on making a separate video about this so don't be wary it's coming I will be answering your questions so this marks the end of this video thank you for again for listening I really really appreciate but before I leave I'm just gonna remind you again if you're new to this channel don't forget to smash that subscribe button and become part of the B society it will be such a great pleasure to have you here don't forget that I love you and I hope to see you again in my next video bye, -bye.